we, we are born again Christians. We're out here talking about the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a testimony. Something that's taken place in our life, it's a record that we are living proof of the power of God. We were once lost, but now we're saved. We were once blind, but now we see. We, we were once sinners, practicing sin, willfully and deliberately breaking God's law. And now we have been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness. We now are saints. We walk with God. We're friends with God. We've been reconciled back to his kindness and to his goodness that is being revealed to you today through the preaching of the gospel. We bring you the gospel. Gospel means good news. It's incredible news that God has made a way to be reconciled back to him. Yes, God in his love and his mercy and his kindness, his favor. It says he wants to be friends. But you're in an enmity against God. You have willfully and deliberately broken God's law. But God says, look, I'll forgive. I will cleanse. Will you repent? Will you turn? Will you receive my kingdom? The kingdom of God is a, a way of thinking where Jesus Christ becomes king, becomes Lord, becomes Savior. He's the one that took the punishment of sin on the cross. And so we stand and boast in that. We stand to declare that, that you might understand the truth, and the truth would set you free as it has set me free. I've been set free from the lie of Satan, the lie of Lucifer, the Antichrist, those who rebel against God, those who hate God, children of disobedience, those who disobey God, where you tear down the rules and the, and the laws of God written on your heart that your conscience bears witness to. Yes, your conscience bears witness to you when you have sex out of marriage. Your conscience bears witness to you. Yes, when you sodomize your wife. Yes, your conscience, not just homosexuality, it's sodomy. God hates sodomy. Sodomy is an evil before God. And God has revealed it right here in the Holy Bible. He's holy. God is holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It's the Holy Bible, Holy Father, Holy Spirit, commanding you to live holy. What does holy mean? It means separate. You are separate. See, God is separate. He is above all. Do you understand? He is holy and unapproachable. But he has sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the God-man, that you might be able to draw near to God. And so we come out that you might experience the power of God. See, that God has demonstrated his power through us by delivering us, by setting us free, by giving us a testimony. Oh, the message that I bring you. The preaching of the cross. I'm not talking about something that hangs around your neck. I'm not some, some, talking about something tattooed on your arm or some cross on a building. I'm talking about a sacrifice, an offering, one who died in your place, paid your debt, the punishment of your crime and rebellion against God. Jesus Christ came and was that offering, that sacrifice. He is the substitute for you. You deserve to die. The soul that sins shall surely die. Have you ever lied? Oh, yes, that one lie requires your soul. Not just a death here. Oh, no, a spiritual death, eternal death. That's when you are in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone because of your sin. Now, you can say there is no God. You can suppress the truth. You can reject what I'm telling you. But you will be accountable when you stand before God Almighty on that day. You will stand before him, and you will have no excuse because he has revealed his eternal attributes. His, his everlasting love is revealed to you every day as he allows us to experience this day that he has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Man, I'm rejoicing in it. I'm rejoicing in it. Oh, man, we're, we're, God is a God of the living. He is a living God. He is here, and he's, ex and he's walking with us, and you are now in the presence of the kingdom of God, the presence, because we have walked in here. We have come. Oh, yes, we're messengers of God. We bring you the message, the good news, that your sins can be blotted out and times of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord. But God commands you to repent. What does repentance mean? A change of mind, a change of way that you are thinking about yourself, about your world, about your life. That you have to come to understand that Jesus Christ is God. That Jesus Christ is the only way. And you must follow him. Jesus Christ is the truth. You must believe in him. Jesus Christ is the life. What is life? 
eternal life, abundant life, everlasting life. What is life? Oh, life is in Jesus Christ. Because he is the giver of life, that by all things, by him, all things were created, whether things in heaven or things in earth. Thrones or dominions, rulers or authorities, that which is visible or invisible. All things were created by him and for him. And he holds all things together by the word of his power. Oh, oh, God is here. God is here, and you understand it. It is shame for two women to kiss each other in public. It is shame. No, it's not love. It's lust. There's a spirit. There's an evil spirit here in San Francisco. A spirit of sodomy. A spirit of homosexuality. There's an evil spirit here, just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's an evil spirit that comes and possesses you. And you get all weird and perverted and kinky and strange. That which is not normal is, becomes normal because of demons. Demons, the demonic, the invisible. Oh, the children of disobedience. But we are the children of life. We are the children of God. Right here, I'm a child of God. I'm a friend of God. I walk with God. I know Him. I shine the light. I'm the salt of the earth. And then we come out here to shine the light in your dark minds, in your dark life. See, you're walking in darkness. But Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. And whoever believes in me, whoever follows me, will not abide in darkness, but will have the light of life. I can see God has given me light. God has given me eyes to see, ears to hear, to walk with him, to know him. And now you can experience the power of God through the Holy Bible. You can read the Bible that these things were written that you might believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Savior, and that believing you may have everlasting life. Right here, the words of life. Oh, the Spirit is the one that quickens it. The flesh profits nothing. If you live in the flesh, you walk in the flesh, your mind is set on the things of the flesh, you cannot please God. You've got to walk in the Spirit. You've got to be a spiritual man. You've got to be born again of the Spirit. Oh, yes, you got to come into that place where Jesus says, my words are spirit and they are life. You have that life? We have that joy, uh, that peace that passes all understanding because your sins are forgiven. You have repented. You have confessed. You believe. You walk with him. You know his mind. You know his heart. You know his ways. I mean, are you friends with God or are you an enemy of God? It's very simple. It's very simple. Do you walk with God? Do you know him? Do you love him? Do you, do you keep his commandments? If you love him, you will keep his commandments. They're not difficult because God gives you the power. Gives you the power to keep his commandments. It's not hard uh, not to cheat on your wife and look at porno. It's not hard. No, you've given yourself over to that spirit of pornography. Oh, when you're all by yourself, you think no one sees? To the Lord, behold the evil and the good. The eyes... Lord are in every place. Do you understand that? Beholding. He sees you're accountable. You're going to stand before him. And of course I'm going to raise my voice. Of course I'm going to cry out on the street corner. Of course I'm going to try to warn the multitudes that are on the broad road that leads to destruction. Of course I'm going to try to love my neighbor. I'm trying to love you. I'm trying to love you by telling you the truth. Oh yes, it's a tough love. It's a hard love to tell you that sodomy is sin. Oh, it's tough to tell you to, that, that your alcohol addiction, you indulging in alcohol, being a drunkard. You know, when you get intoxicated by spirits, not the Holy Spirit, evil spirits. When you drink that fine wine and that scotch, that Jack Daniels, oh, to catch a little buzz. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. It's love. Telling you the truth that you're suppressing the pain. When Christ says, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, that will give you rest. Rest for your soul. A peace that you do not have. Because he is the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Do you know him? The Bible says the wicked have no peace. The wicked are never at rest. They are never content. They are never satisfied. They are never fulfilled. Oh no, they're never in that place that this is it. See, right now you stand in line, you're waiting to go somewhere, thinking that once you arrive at that place, you'll be satisfied. No, you're going to get there, and you're not going to be satisfied. Then you've got to go somewhere else. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Now that's loving heart, cussing me out. I'm trying to love you, and you cuss me out. I, I don't understand that. That's not love. I'm trying to love you about 
but by blessing you with eternal life. I received everlasting life. If I die right now, we have an earthquake. You ready? Earthquake? Are you ready for that earthquake? It's a big one. Oh, there's one coming. I live here. We're waiting for that big one. I tell you, I don't have to fear death. Amen. The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. The law comes and shows us we're lawbreakers. That sting shows us that we're going to die right. until you turn to Christ, the resurrection and the life. He who believes in him, even though he dies, yet he shall live. I believe. Do you believe? I want you to believe. I want you all to believe. I want you all to get saved. I want you all to enter into heaven. I want you all to inherit the earth. I want you all to experience. Huh? Jesus Christ, our exceeding great reward. Why do you think I tell? I'm not trying to get you to go to church. A lot of you already go to church and you live like the devil. No, I'm not trying to point you to go to church. I'm not trying to tell you to give money. God owns the cattle on the thousand hills. He don't need money. Oh, no. He speaks and it happens. He breathes and it happens. It happens. Oh, it's wonderful. I love it. Come on, why, why would I stand out here and tell you about the coming judgment and about heaven and hell? Because I want you to come to experience what I have, experience of the love of God who has washed away all of my guilt, all of my sin, my shame, the condemnation that was against me. I stand here that there is no condemnation anymore in Christ because I do not walk in the flesh. I walk in the spirit of the living God. I want you to experience the power of God today. That God would give you a revelation of God. God himself would give you a revelation of God. Who he is. Who he, oh, who he says he is in his word. The word of God. That this is what's going to judge you on the last days. The word of God. It's alive. You can't get rid of the Bible. No, I can't shut up. It's a word that burns in my bosom, a fire that burns within me. How can I shut up when multitudes are going to be weeping and wailing in hell? How can I shut up? If I love my neighbor, I should be weeping over you because you don't see what's about to take place on the earth. You think that God is happy, happy, joy, joy. You think God loves San Francisco and its diversity and its, its transvestites changing men into women and women into men and the sodomy and all the pornography and the prostitutes and all the, the, the men that are that are molesting their children in secret. And you think that God looks down and says, Man, that's great. I love that all. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at those people down there. Look at that man beating his wife. Oh, look at that man cheating on his wife in that hotel. Oh, I hope I'll I step on your toes. It's real. God is watching. And I'm telling you that God is willing to forgive you and cleanse you and change you if you're willing to repent. You come in confession. You deny yourself. You say, God, you are right. You are right. My lifestyle, the way I live, the way I think, the way I talk. I mean, the things that I do are wicked in your sight. God, forgive me a sinner. Forgive me a rebellious woman. Forgive me and God will forgive. That's the good news. I've experienced the forgiveness of God. I've experienced the power of God. I've experienced the love of God. It passes knowledge. Not because I'm worthy. Not because I deserve it. Not because I went and did something and then God came to me. Oh, it's God so generating love that he loved me because he is love. God is love. It's not like being a Muslim where Allah is submission and he's off with your head. There's only one God whose definition is love. God is love. And look at God's love coming to you. Open rebuke is better than hidden love. God's going to come out and reveal and expose and uncover. He's going to uncover because he loves you. He's going to convict you because he loves you. He's going to chastise you because he loves you. If God does not chastise you, then you're a bastard. You have no father. God's got to spank me. God's got to reveal to me the areas of my life. And I'm dependent upon him to do that. It's not by works of righteousness that we have done. And that deed's done in our own self-righteousness. But it's according to the mercy of God. Look how merciful God is to you, young man. And you flip me off. Look how merciful God is that he has allowed you to experience this day. He's allowed you. He's allowed you again to walk upon his planet. It's not yours, America. It is not yours. It's God's. God owns it all. And you're a steward. And one day you're going to stand and give an account. One day you're going to answer him. One day you're going to... 
You're going to confess. See, everybody enters into 